Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, this is National Pickle Week. And among others who celebrated the occasion was our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School. I celebrated National Pickle Week, all right, by getting myself into the prettiest pickle you've ever seen. It all started innocently enough when my landlady and I sat down to breakfast last Thursday morning. There's your cereal, Connie. Now tell me, dear, have you made any plans for your vacation next month? Nothing definite, Mrs. Davis. Perhaps it's just as well not to plan too far in advance. Who knows what summer may bring? You might even elope. Have you ever thought of that, Connie? Many times, Mrs. Davis. I'd do it in a minute, too. If it weren't for a stubborn little streak in me, which keeps insisting that it's no fun to elope by yourself. (laughs) Oh, I, I didn't mean by yourself, Connie. What's wrong with Mr. Boynton? For submitting the outstanding question of the week, we are sending Mrs. Margaret Davis a lifetime supply of Dutch boy paint. I wish I knew what was wrong with Mr. Boynton. All he talks about lately is his impending vacation in South America. South America? What a wonderful idea. And it simplifies everything. It does? Of course. If Mr. Boynton is going to South America, that's where you have to go. The thought has occurred to me, Mrs. Davis, but there's one thing that stands in the way. Transportation. Transportation? Yes, one of my water wings has a blowout. (laughs) Don't be discouraged by your present financial state, Connie. I'll go make some tea and read your tea leaves in a little while. Maybe there'll be some good news in your cup. Why, at this very moment, Lady Luck may be camping on your doorstep. Well, don't sit there, lady. Come on in. (laughs) Greetings, most gracious and scintillating educator. (laughs) Thank you, most generous and observant pupil. Sit down, Walter, and have some toast and jelly. Ah, thanks. Thanks. What kind of a plant is that you're holding? It's a rare black orchid, Miss Brooks. Here. An orchid? Must have cost you quite a bit of money, Walter. Pish, tush. The blossom cost me nothing. (laughs) Besides, this is no time to concern ourselves with petty monetary considerations. I'm going to be rich, Miss Brooks. Wealthy beyond all dreams of avarice. The fabulous treasures of the universe are within my grasp. Say, buddy, could you spare a round-trip ticket to South America? (laughs) No, I'm serious, Miss Brooks. I've discovered uranium. Uranium? Where? On my shoe. (laughs) Who's your boot black? (laughs) It's no joke, Miss Brooks. I made the discovery in the chem lab. We got a brand new Geiger counter, and it's... Uh, By the way, have you ever used a Geiger counter? I haven't had to, Walter. Very few of my pupils are named Geiger. (laughs) No. (laughs) I'm afraid you don't understand. A Geiger counter is an instrument that measures the number and intensity of emanations from radioactive substances. Sounds terribly talented. But how did you get mixed up with it? Well, I climbed on a desk to fix a light bulb, and my shoe got near the Geiger counter. You should have heard it. It almost blew its top. That means uranium's on my shoe. Now, the way I figure it, all I've got to do is retrace my steps of the past few days. Wouldn't it be easier to just start mining your shoe? (laughs) Please, Miss Brooks. No, you've got to help me. You see, the counter is school property and can't be removed from the building without Mr. Conklin's permission. But if a teacher were to ask him... Oh, not me, Walter. I'd like to assist you in this project, but now is the wrong time. Tuesday, I knocked a bowl of soup into his lap in the cafeteria, and last week, I dropped a typewriter on his foot. Oh. Say, it's almost 8.15. I better park this orchid in the icebox and get ready to leave. Have a glass of milk, Walter. I'll just be a minute. Okay, Miss Brooks. Oh, it's you, Connie. The tea is almost ready. I'm afraid I won't have time for the reading, Mrs. Davis. I just want to put this in the icebox. My, what a lovely stalk of asparagus. (laughs) Don't let Walter Denton hear you say that. This happens to be a black orchid. Oh, but you shouldn't put that in the icebox, Connie. It won't do anybody any good there. Why don't you take it down to school with you and give it to Mr. Conklin? 
Mr. Conklin? Yes. You told me yourself you've been naughty lately. Maybe this little gift would make up for your recent habit of <laughs> dropping things on him. Say, it might at that. Although I wouldn't want Walter to find out that I gave away his present. Walter wouldn't mind. Besides, he won't know anything about, about it. I'll just put the flower into this box that the clean laundry came in, tie it with this red ribbon, and presto, you've got a peace offering for your principal. Thanks, Mrs. Davis. I'm sure nothing could make him happier unless I was tied up in the box. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I wish you'd reconsider my proposition about that Geiger counter. If you'll just get us permission to use it, I'll make you a 50-50 partner in whatever we find. It's a more than liberal offer, Walter, but I'm afraid I can't take advantage of it. Right now, I'm trying to figure a good method of stowing away to South America. Well, all right, Miss Brooks, but I hate the thought of passing up a possible bonus of $10,000 offered for discoveries of uranium. I know, Walter, and I can't say that it's altogether impossible, but as far as the immediate future's concerned, did you say $10,000? <laughs> That's right. And if it's a big field, we might even get ten times that much. Open the throttle, Casey, and point me at Mr. Conklin's office. <laughs> I finished straightening up your office, Daddy. Thanks, Harriet. Run along, child. Isn't there anything else I can do? You can leave me alone. Now get to your first class. Daddy, you're irritated this morning. Harriet, you're another Ellery Queen. <laughs> it so happens that some vandal broke into my garden, trampled my flower beds, and stole a rare black orchid. <laughs> I just found out about it myself. I've been nursing that plant along for seven years. I was planning to give that orchid to your dear mother. It's her birthday today, you know. Yes, I know. Now I'll probably have to buy a present for the old... It's a hard gift. To... <laughs> if I ever get my hands on the scoundrel who... Enter. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. Oh, it's you. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Harriet. I was just leaving the office, Miss Brooks... Try and cheer Daddy up a bit, will you? He's rather low this morning. I'll see you at lunch, Daddy. Bye. Goodbye. Well, Mr. Conklin, isn't this a bright and cheerful morning? Be brief, Miss Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> what brings you to my office? I just came in to leave this little gift. Gift? Yes, sir. May I put it on your desk? If you think you can do so without knocking the typewriter off on my foot again. <laughs> what else? Mr. Conklin, I should like your permission to borrow the Geiger counter from the chem lab. Geiger counter? I believe that's what it's called. It's used to indicate the presence of uranium. Miss Brooks, are you planning to pelt me with an A-bomb? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not, Mr. Conklin. I couldn't even lift an A-bomb. <laughs> but I've heard that there's quite a reward for discovering new uranium deposits, and I thought I maybe kindly I... kindly could... leave the premises. But, Mr. Conklin, I, I... I am in no mood to discuss this nonsensical project at this moment. I've had a most difficult morning. Nay, a shocking morning. What happened, Mr. Conklin? I don't know how versed you are in things botanical, Miss Brooks. Oh, I'm pretty versed. <laughs> <laughs> Several years ago, I purchased a rare plant. For the first few years, it failed to bloom. I tried everything. Finally, I ceased to rely on the hit-or-miss methods of plant propagation employed by a bunch of buzzing bees, and I pollinated that plant personally. <laughs> Do you realize what that entailed? Of course. You had to smear your feet with honey and jump from petal to petal. <laughs> No, Miss Brooks. But there are other back-breaking procedures which I pursued faithfully for seven long years until finally my efforts bore fruit. You became the father of a lemon tree. <laughs> Wrong again. An orchid plant. A black orchid plant. Just yesterday, it started to bloom, and I said to myself, you're a lucky man, Osgood. Tomorrow, this lovely flower will blossom just in time for your wife Martha's birthday. And then do you know what happened this morning? Yes. I mean, no. <laughs> Some vandal stole it. Well, 
I guess I better be running along. <laughs> Miss Brooks, where are you taking that box? I thought you said it was a gift. Oh, it is a gift, Mr. Conklin. But not for you. That is not actually. It's for Mrs. Conklin. Her birthday, you know. Just a little remembrance. Well, you can leave it here. I'll take it to her after school. I'd like to see what it is before I... Oh, no. uh, I'd rather you didn't see it, Mr. Conklin. That is, well, it's uh, underwear. (laughs) That's all right. We share a dresser, you know. Put it down and get to your classroom. But, Mr. Dismiss! <laughs> oh, uh, one thing before you go. If you should happen to hear any of the students, or faculty for that matter, discussing a black orchid, would you please make a confidential note of the party's name? Confidential? I won't even read it to myself. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, tests published in authoritative dental literature show that when teeth are brushed right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Two years' research at five leading universities, hundreds of case histories, shows that when used as directed, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Yes, exhaustive tests show the Colgate way best to prevent decay better than any other home method of oral hygiene known today. Based on both clinical and x-ray examinations, the Colgate Way stopped more decay for more people than ever before reported in all dentifrice history. Even more important, there were no new cavities whatever for more than one out of three who used Colgate Dental Cream as directed. Think of it. Not even one new cavity in two full years. No other dentifrice, paste or powder, ammoniated or not, No other dentifrice has proof of such results. The best results ever reported for a dentifrice of any type. So always use Colgate to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And remember, when you follow the Colgate way, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Well, my morning classes passed without any undue noise from the principal's office. So I assumed that Mr. Conklin hadn't found time to open the box containing his own black orchid, so thoughtfully provided for me by Walter Denton. When lunch period arrived, I hurried to the biology laboratory to let Mr. Boynton in on the ground floor of my predicament. Busy, Mr. Boynton? Not at all, Miss Brooks. Come on in. Uh, Before we go to lunch, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. It's really silly, I guess, but I was rather embarrassed this morning. Embarrassed? It all started when Walter Denton came to pick me up and told me some ridiculous story about finding uranium on his shoes. Oh, that isn't completely ridiculous, Miss Brooks. As a matter of fact, it was more or less confirmed in the chem lab by the reaction of the Geiger counter. You mean that Walter did actually step into uranium? Well, not necessarily. It could be some similar radioactive substance. You realize, of course, that the Geiger counter is an extremely sensitive instrument. It'll even pick up emanations from your radium dial wristwatch. All the way from Fisher's Pawn Shop? (laughs) It's a wonderful invention. And while Walter's shoe may not necessarily indicate the presence of any large field nearby, it's still a rather provocative incident. I'll say it is. Half of $10,000 is very provocative. If one were to discover some uranium, one would never miss the money it cost for a summer vacation, would one? I should think not. I'm going to South America myself. South America? (laughs) That's funny. I'm going to spend my vacation down there. You too? (laughs) What a coincidence. When are you leaving? The day school ends, June 23rd. You too? (laughs) What boat are you taking? The SS Brazil. You too? <laughs> what cabin will you be? Oh, no, I... <laughs> I... I just meant that if we're going to be in Brazil at the same time, it ought to make it very pleasant for both of us. They say the nights down there are very conducive to romance. Yes, I've heard something to that effect. In fact, on most June nights in Brazil, the stars seem to be so low in the sky that you can reach out and touch each other. 
Please, Miss Brooks, I... <laughs> I, uh, I don't like to change the subject, but... Not there... much, you don't. <laughs> That's all right, Mr. Boynton. Brazil can wait. What is it you wanted to say? Well, uh, I'd like to show you just how the Geiger counter reacts. Mr. Keller has a tiny sample of uranium in the chem lab. It's usually under lock and key, though, and... I... Oh, hi, Miss Brooks. Mr. Boynton. Oh, hello, Alder. I just dropped by to take another look at the Geiger counter. Uh, did you tell Mr. Boynton about the swell black orchid I gave you, Miss Brooks? I was just about to. Walter gave me a fine black orchid this morning, Mr. Boynton. A black orchid? Say, they're mighty rare. Must have been cultivated for about seven years. Most likely in a hothouse. This one is hotter than that. <laughs> Walter, I don't usually give away presents, but I think you ought to know that in trying to get on Mr. Conklin's good side, I gave him the black orchid. You gave Mr... Conklin, the bl I better get a glass of milk. I don't feel so good. <laughs> Just a minute, young man. Why did you steal that flower from Mr. Conklin's garden? Well, it wasn't really stealing. I was only getting even. Every time Mr. Conklin passes our house, he strolls through the gate and gloms a rose for himself. Well, rose gloming isn't orchid gloming. <laughs> Besides, why did you have to make me the fence? The fence? Receiver of stolen goods. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of Chaucer lately. <laughs> I'm sorry about the whole thing, Miss Brooks. But tell me, what did Mr. Conklin say when he saw his own orchid? Luckily for both of us, he hasn't opened the box yet. Well, then maybe if someone could get into his office... You too? <laughs> <laughs> That's just what I was thinking. You too? <laughs> now, I just saw Harriet in the hall. Of course, she doesn't know about what I did, but she told me your dad went shopping. Then maybe we can remove the plant before he comes back. Exactly. And I've got a scheme that'll make it impossible for old Marblehead, uh, Mr. Conklin, <laughs> to incriminate any of us. Are you with me? What's the layout, Louie? <laughs> well, I snipped the orchid off at the bottom. It's still got a long stem, see? Now, as soon as it gets dark, we can sneak back into his garden, stick the stem in the ground, and when he sees it tomorrow, he'll think something was wrong with his eyes this morning. And then when he snips it off, he won't know it has no roots. Walter, you're a genius. But Mr. Conklin's bound to find out it has no roots when another orchid fails to grow. Maybe so, but in seven years, we can cook up a dilly of an alibi. <laughs> I'll keep a watch here at the door, Miss Brooks. All right, Mr. Boynton. Now hurry, Walter. We've got to get that box off Mr. Conklin's desk before he gets back. Okay, Miss Brooks. There, I've got it. He's coming down the hall. We better get out of here. It's too late. He'll see us. Quick, get rid of the box. What box? The one you're holding, Walter. Oh, here you are, Mr. Boynton. All right. Yeah, I don't want this. Here, here, Miss Brooks. Here's a nice orchid for you. For me? How sweet of you, Miss. What am I saying? <laughs> here, you take this, Walter. I'm allergic. Keep it. <laughs> quick, quick, Miss Brooks. Toss it out the window. The window? Where is it? Oh, right here. Open, thank goodness. There you go. Hello. What's everybody doing in my... Miss Brooks, may I inquire what it was you just threw out of my window? Who? Me? <laughs> that is your name, isn't it, Brooks? Or do you shot put under a nom de plume? <laughs> well, I do remember tossing something out, but it, it was just a little bug. A bug? Yes, sir. That's just what it was, Mr. Conklin. A bug. We all saw it, didn't we, Mr. Boynton? Oh, yes, yes, it was a bug, Mr. Conklin. In my office? What sort of a bug was it? A beetle. A boy we... A louse. <laughs> Three of them were building a nest. A nest? Well, a hutch or whatever it is they live in. Uh, the bull weevil live in cotton bowls. You must get awfully tired of watching football games, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> tired of watching football games? I've never heard anything so. What's going on here? <laughs> What are you three doing in my office? Well, sir, we just came in to wish your wife a happy birthday. <laughs> you came in to wish my wife a happy birthday? Yes, sir. Happy birthday to her. Happy birthday oh, to her. Oh, quiet! Mr. <laughs> Conklin, I might as well tell the truth. I wanted to give Mrs. Conklin her present myself. That's why we entered your office, but 
Then when I heard you coming, I became nervous and tossed it out the window. Oh, well, that's easily remedied. We'll just reach out and pick it up. Now, but if there's nothing in it but underwear, Please, I... Please, not in front of Mr. Boynton. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that was a little fib, too, Mr. Conklin. It, it isn't underwear. It's something for the house. You see, I wanted you to be surprised, too. That's right. That's what Miss Brooks told us. Yes, sir. She wants you to be surprised, too. Oh, oh, well, that's different. Something for the house, eh? Mrs. Conklin's been talking about new curtains for the dinette. Could this be curtains? It could be for us. (laughs) Uh, uh, Please, Mr. Conklin, if you'll just hand it over, I'll be eternally in your debt. You are now. (laughs) But if it pleases you to surprise us, then take it. But whatever you do, don't come over too early. I'm not going to give Mrs. Conklin my gift until after dinner. Oh, that's perfect. You'll be good and busy inside. That is, goodbye now. The cafeteria's about to close, Daddy. Aren't you going to have lunch? I had to bite downtown, Harriet, when I bought your mother her birthday present. Oh, what did you get her, Daddy? A radium dial table model clock so she can see what time of night it is without waking me. I took it home before I returned to school. Fifteen dollars I paid for that clock. She'd better like it. I hope you hid it someplace where she won't find it in advance. You know how inquisitive Mother is about her presence. I'm well aware of your mother's little idiosyncrasy, Harriet. I hid it all right. I buried it in the little sunken toolbox out in our garden. This is one present nobody could find without a Geiger counter. Get off that driveway, Walter. Here's the gate to the backyard. Now, show us about where you got the orchid, Walter, and I'll dig a little hole for it and put it back. All right, you are, Mr. Boynton. It's over this way. Bring the box. What's that box you're carrying, Walter? This? Oh, this is the Geiger counter. I figured if we get away with this flower deal, we can get away with borrowing the counter for one evening. Oh, great. Now I'm the co-owner of a hot Geiger counter. (laughs) I wonder how Tehachapi is in the summertime. (laughs) Oh, don't worry, Miss Brooks. We'll be through with this job in a jiffy, and then we can do a little prospecting. Oh, uh, stop right here, Mr. Boynton. I think this is pretty close to where I got the flower. All right, Walter. Please, Mr. Boynton, there's nothing to get so excited about. That wasn't me. No? It's a Geiger counter. This is where I must have stepped. Miss Brooks, we're rich! South America, take me away. (laughs) Mr. Boynton, dig some more. I'll put the counter over here now so it'll keep quiet. We don't want to disturb anybody. Uh, Wait a minute. I've uncovered some sort of a toolbox. What's this package in it? Listen. It's ticking. It must be a time bomb A a time bomb? But who would want to blow up Mr. Conklin? Who wouldn't? (laughs) I mean, if there's uranium around here This bomb could have been planted by someone Who didn't want any of us to get it That's right Or it could have been placed by some crackpot Who wants to see our civilization survive (laughs) Listen It's ticking louder. Quick, give it to me. Here's a full watering can. This should stop it. There, it stopped. You've done it, Miss Brooks. Oh, you certainly have, Miss Brooks. I don't know what it is she's done, but I'll bet I'm against it. (laughs) Mr. Conklin, oh, this is one time you won't be mad at us. Miss Brooks just stopped the ticking. Oh, she certainly did, sir. She threw the whole box right into the watering can. You see, it isn't making a sound. Indeed, it isn't. (laughs) But then, after they're submerged in water for a while, very few $15 table model clocks are capable of making any sound! $15 table clock? (laughs) Yes, Miss Brooks? Contained in this soggy, gift-wrapped box is my wife's <laughs> birthday present. Well, is there any message you'd like to convey? All together, gang. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mrs. Conway. Eve 
Arden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl to dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid. Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, when we showed Mr. Conklin that his black orchid was still intact, and I promised to reimburse him for the ruined clock, he calmed down a bit, and his complexion returned to its normal color, purple. <laughs> After he had dismissed us, I slunk back to my room and fell into a nice, peaceful stupor, slumber. <laughs> However, I awoke in the morning with a very disquieting thought. The fact remained that somewhere, somehow, Walter Denton had stepped in uranium. Mr. Keller, the chemistry teacher, had verified that. So when Walter arrived to pick me up, I hastened to reaffirm our partnership. We are still partners, aren't we, Walter? Oh, you bet, Miss Brooks. Mr. Conklin didn't see the Geiger counter at all. Good. Now, today, let's get a hold of a sample of uranium so we'll know what we're looking for. Hmm? And first, you'll have to give me $5, Miss Brooks. $5? We're partners, aren't we? You put in five, and I'll put in five. Mr. Keller just called to tell me that's what a sample costs. Well, why should we have to buy it? Couldn't we borrow it? Hey, look, Miss Brooks, remember I told you how I got up on the table in school to fix the light bulb? Yes, but what has that got to do with the uranium sample in the chem lab? That's the uranium I stepped in. What? Sure. That's why we got to put in $5 each to buy the school a new sample. Now I've got to go to South America, if only to send you a tsetse fly. Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, Lester White, and Joe Quillen, with the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, and Gloria McMillan. For a beauty bath that brings you glamour from head to toe, get bath size pommel of soap. Yes, ladies, for a velvet smooth beauty lather that caresses your skin, leaves your whole body glowing with the warm blush of fragrant loveliness, Enjoy a beauty bath with bath size palm olive. It's perfect for your tub or shower. Just the gentlest massage over your body creates a glorious lather that leaves your skin delightful. Yes, for the most luxurious bath you've ever had, get big bath size palm olive soap. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.